Hello chess friends and welcome to a really exciting game I have to share with you. I'm Grandmaster Max Sillingworth and here I'll be presenting game 4 of the Magnus Invitational 2020 round between Hikaru Nakamura as white against Alireza Ferrucha playing as black. Now, these are two of the very best rapid players in the world with Nakamura coming third in the uh, World Rapid Championship for 2019. Ali Reza came in second place in this same tournament. Uh, Nakamura is also number one on the current FIDE Blitz ratings. So we already know it's going to be a super exciting match. And well, let's get into this game four. So Nakamura was playing with the white pieces with Furusha playing as black. And Nakamura actually had already won the match two and a half half at this point. But still, this game was really uh, something else. So we had one e4. And Ferrugia didn't play his usual Sicilian defense. Or e5 that he recently started playing a lot. But instead played Scandinavian with d5. Possibly inspired by some of Magnus Carlsen's recent games in this line. However, after d5 and ed5... Well, black is either going to lose some time with the knight or with the queen uh, recapturing the pawn, as it were. So, in the game, Ferrugia played queen takes d5. Uh, white played knight c3, attacking queen with a tempo. And Ferrugia played queen to a5, which is, you could say, the old main line. Whereas Tiviakov's queen d6 is a more modern approach. Although I find one disadvantage of bringing the queen out early if we play some moves is that often the queen will get kicked around with some g3 and bishop f4 set up in the future which seems particularly good if black were to play say a6 then you know, g3 is a pretty uh, annoying move preparing to activate both the bishops along these long diagonals. So. Instead, Ferrugia played queen to a5, and here Nakamura had a bit of fun where instead of playing the main lines with d4 and with knight f3, like we saw after queen d6, since he'd already won the match, he went back to his old, uh, let's say, experimental ways and played this gambit with b4, which actually I have some memories of it with playing this move in Blitz uh, as a surprise system. Though usually after they took the pawn with queen takes b4, rook b1 and queen d6. I'd sort of look at the position and wonder, okay, why did I sack a pawn again? I only get half, half open b file. But Nakamura managed to make it work in this game. Where he played the move d4 and... I mean, the challenge black faces is that... Well, normally in the Scandinavian, you develop your bishop to either f5 or g4 and... You know, build a really solid pawn chain on the light squares with the bishop outside the pawn chain. And with the pressure on the b7 pawn, it's really not that easy to achieve this anymore. Since b6 would be rather time consuming and slow, for example. I'm really surprised by Ferocious' next move. And then he played the move queen d8, which... Maybe it's not such a bad move, but it just feels a little bit passive to me. I think... A move like knight f6 is certainly more natural. I'm not really worried about knight b5, since the queen can always come back and you'll always have resources to keep the c7 pawn well defended, meaning bishop f4 and knight d5 in that line. And if knight f3, then I think that a more solid way for black to play is I have to go e6 and you know simply castle a king to safety, saying that you're up a pawn. Or maybe even better, play g6 and go for this very safe setup with the kingside fianchetto. Perhaps it's not necessarily worse for white. You know, maybe that knight b5 idea I mentioned has a little more sting when black is committed to g6. Though still I feel after say bishop f4 that, you know, as well as knight d5, you also have knight a6 and just kicking the knight back for later c6. I can't help but feel in this sort of position that black is the one who is probably better, if anybody. Uh, since also... 
Well, I mean, you can't just play bishop g3. So after c6, you're going to run into some annoying queen a5 or knight c3 moves down the track. So, so we had queen d8, which is a little bit too cautious, but maybe not an outright mistake. Uh, white played bishop c4, knight f6, knight f3. Essentially, white is just playing normal moves, but without his b pawn, basically without b2 and with rook b1 thrown in. Uh, black played e6, which is a pretty solid and sensible move. I guess the alternative is to go c6 here, which maybe is aimed at discouraging a d5 push in the future. Because uh, actually after e6, the move d5 would be an interesting possibility to try and open up the center before black and castle. But since the white king is stuck in the center, I think that Nakamura made the correct decision playing castles. And here Ferrugia played the move bishop e7, which again is a playable move. But if you want to avoid d5 by white, then I think c6 would be a playable alternative. It's a little passive, but on the other hand, you are up a pawn, so you can afford to be a little bit cautious here. Well, we had bishop e7 in the game, and Nakamura played knight to e5. Uh, I think that also queen e2 and maybe rook d1 is also a very standard way to develop. It's just a very harmonious development to have the rook opposite the queen in this way. And it means that if they play, say, c6 to try and stop d5, well, then you might go bishop d3, and with moves like knight e4, you can start to position the pieces toward an attack on the king side. Uh, actually, the position reminds me a little bit of this uh, anti-Vienna gambit, where you sort of see white sack the e-pawn and get a similar sort of initiative for the pawn. Uh, I think in that line, you have a pawn on the b file instead of the c file but otherwise it's a somewhat similar sort of play so in the game white played knight to e5 which looks nice to put the knight on this post obviously in these structures these are the typical strong points for white's knights in general especially e5 and after rook e1 i think that well perhaps this can be a good puzzle for you from black's perspective because I think Ferrugia's move here was just too ambitious and broke some uh, key, let's say, principles for playing chess. So what do you think would be the best move for black in this position? Have a think about it, pause the video, and come back here when you've decided on your move. Okay, the move that Ferrugia played was c5. And the problem with playing c5 is that you're basically inviting the opening of the position when there's still quite backward development for black. White has five pieces developed to black's three, if we include the f8 rook, which is debatable. So it makes sense that the opening of position on a general level will probably favor white. And I think instead black should either have played a6, with the idea of supporting b5, bishop b7, and a development kind of in the style of the Moran uh, semi-slav. And if black was able to get in c5 later, then certainly his position would be very promising. Of course, white can try to do things about it. Maybe knight e4 can be a move to try and trade the knights and swing the major piece to the king's side. So I think in this sort of position, white is mainly playing for the attack on the black king to show his compensation. If you give black too much time, he'll just complete development and say he's a pawn up. On the other hand, I think a move like knight bd7 may well be even better. Just with the idea of either swapping the knights and you know, trying to reduce white's initiative through exchanges, or if white plays queen f3 with the idea that knight e5 d5 is not permitting an exchange of queens anymore, well then black has knight b6 hitting the pawn and hitting the bishop at the same time. So already we feel that uh, the black position has somehow improved in the last moves. Granted, after bishop d3, it's an interesting question whether black should actually take on d4 or not. I mean, he'll be up two pawns if he does. But on the other hand, white will get a lot of compensation as well. Uh, technically, they're not threatening to play queen c3. Because 
of the bishop h7 discovery. Uh, still a move like knight b5 could be interesting, and even queen h3 as well, with the idea of just focusing fire against that weak pawn on h7, which could easily become a target. Uh, you could even actually go bishop b2 and have some discoveries on the queen as well. So intuitively, I feel like white probably gets full compensation in this line with either queen h3 or with knight to b5. Anyhow, both these moves are better than what... Both a6 and knight bd7 are better than Farouche's c5. If you're wondering why c5 is a mistake, uh, concretely speaking, the reason is that d5 is just very strong. Uh, now with d5, we're forcing open the long diagonal for our bishop. And if the pawns were to be traded, which is in fact what happened in the game... Well, we can see that the f7 pawn is suddenly quite weak in black's camp with the pressure from both the knight and potentially the bishop. Uh, black is not absolutely forced to take on e5, d5, but if he doesn't, then d6 will really damage the black structure. Uh, let's say if bishop d6, for example, then, well, I was going to say the worst case you can take on e6, and after f e6, they're stuck with a doubled... Not a double, but an isolated pawn that's quite weak. I think white would be much better there, even with the pawn less. But maybe it's even better to play knight takes f7. And, you know, if you can sack a piece soundly, then it feels like a good idea. And then after d6 already, you know, the rook has to move to e7. So that there isn't an e7 discovered check. But after bishop f4, we can really feel the strength of white's initiative. Or using the pin... Uh, no bishop to the queen, using the tactics to our favour, as obviously black can't take our bishop. After bishop c7, you can just cash in with, say, queen d8. In the worst case, you're getting your material back with bishop d6, forking the rook and the pawn. And I kind of like white's initiative here. Uh, admittedly, my, white may even be able to improve on this. Uh, I have a feeling that... You know, white might even have a better move in this position than playing queen d8 and bishop c7. But in any case, it's clear white has a nice initiative. Um, so I've drawn some knight b5 ideas as well at different points, playing for domination in alpha zero style. But the game saw e takes d5. After knight d5, I think black's already in serious trouble because the problem is you can't really just sit and do nothing as black. Uh, if you play a pass move like, uh, say, a6, for example, well, white can just play knight e7, and... I mean, white has various tactics here, but you know, knight f7 is creating all sorts of pins and discovered attacks, and looks completely lost for black, because black has no real development to support him. And if you play knight d5, which is probably the best move, well, which way would you take back as white on d5? Uh, with the queen or the bishop. Well, you deserve a pat on the back if you play queen d5. I mean, normally you don't want to trade the queens when you're behind in material, but this is an exception because it's not really that great from the trade the queens after all, because, well, now we're getting our material back. Bishop b7 is a threat. Uh, knight f7 is a threat. Rook f7 and rook e7 is the, the tactical point, using the pin on the rook there. And black just doesn't really have a, a decent move, I think. Uh, I mean, if rook d8, we can simply take on f7 and you know, we just have a really strong attack still, even without the queens on the board. Uh, maybe you can even play bishop h5 and think about swinging the rook over with a rook lift to bring the rook in the attack as well. Uh, also, positionally speaking, you can also go back and pressure the b7 pawn to make it hard for black to develop the queen side sensibly. So it looks really bad for black, but this is probably better than what happened in the game. In the game, Ferrugia played bishop e6, which... Well, it's kind of losing on a few different levels, but both the winning moves for white feature the same kind of idea. So what is the winner for white? Let's see if you can find it with white to move.